Hello everybody and welcome to the 6th round of the 2014 GP4 Offline Championship. We're here at Monaco for the Monaco Grand Prix at the Monte Carlo Street Circuit. A lot of M's in there. Last race won by Roman Quag, meaning that it's his second uh, win in a row for Williams. So it should be a very interesting race to see if he can make three in a row. If he does three in a row, I'd be very surprised, but it's certainly possible considering what can happen in the OC, that's for sure. Anyway, so it's 78 laps around Monaco, one of the shortest tracks in the kind of the lap record set by Miklas Gal last season with the 110.9, 19 turns, the circuit length 3.337 kilometers. So now we're going to take a look at some of the uh, different points of the track, the action zones. Uh, one of the action zones is of course the first corner where there is usually a crash almost every season where all the cars stack up and then eventually they have a crash together. That's how it happens every single year. And as we go further down the track, heading into the uh, chicane, uh, the first chicane on the track, uh, this is a crash that Alex Southgate had uh, when he collected the edge of the wall coming out of it, and unfortunately lost his um, front left wheel, so that was unfortunate for him. And one of the uh, other important bits on the track is Raskas. There is always, and I mean always, action here. There is very rarely a dull moment at that corner. But anyway, the tyre company we'll be using is the soft tyre, and the driver of the day was no surprise, Roman Quag, and the driver, and the race rating was given a seven out of ten. So anyway, here is the grid for the Monaco Grand Prix, and once again, it is a Mercedes front row with Wace Cooper on pole position, with Jamie McKenzie behind him in second. Third on the grid is Robert Inescu, make us go fourth in Red Bull three and four. And then Mercedes one and two in the front row. Uh, in fifth position is Joseph Willows for Ferrari, and sixth position is Veteran Madrina, good call by the from McLaren. Rifki Park was in seventh for Force India with Florian Volker, eighth for Ferrari. On the fifth row of the grid, a good call home by Oliver Glazebrook with Julius Hansen, the better one from him, in tenth position. Eleventh place is Armar Carr, followed by uh, Roberto Gamba in twelfth position. Roman Quag. Uh, down in 13th position, not the qualifying he wanted, with Carrosso with Carrosso 14th. Frank Gamma in 15th position, followed by David Greenwood in 16th. Moving further down the order, 17th place is Will Nenna, followed by Alex Southby in 18th position. 19th place is Cameron Anderson for Gator, 20th place is Ricky Ambasaba. And on the last row of the grid is Franco Lopez for Russia and Robert Hunter for Toro Rosso. Definitely not um, what he would have wanted at all to be on the last row of the grid. Anyway, the track conditions for this race, it will be a dry track, uh, sunny weather, and 0% chance of rain. So it was disappointing because rain would mean there'd be no, there'd be bound to be chaos. Although I imagine there probably already will be anyway. But anyway, the five lights are about to come on for the Monaco Grand Prix as we now have the five lights are on. And we are underway for the Monaco Grand Prix. And who is going to get the jump into the first corner? Is it going to be Cooper or McKenzie? And it looks like it's going to be McKenzie around the outside who takes the lead of Wayscoop, who has to back off and let his Mercedes teammate through. So what a start by the Polish driver who leads ahead of Wayscoop Cooper in second, but Ines Cooper behind him in third as they come through at the first few corners of the track. So it's McKenzie right now in first position. Ways Cooper in second, third is Inescu, fourth Gal, fifth Willow, sixth Vadrina, seventh Farquharzain, eighth Volker, ninth Anderson, and the for a tenth with Gam Roberto Gamma, Carr, Quad, De Rossa, Greenwood, Gamma, Nella, Southgate, Anderson, Lopez, Yan, and Robert Hunter complete in the orders. They've actually got through the first corner without any crashes. That is unbelievable, really. I mean, they've actually got through without any contact so far, but how long that is going to last? Well, we'll wait and see as, we, as they come through uh, under the tunnel for the first time. Out of, uh, for the first time before they have to do it 77 more times after this as uh, McKenzie comes through heading towards uh, the swimming pool section of the track Cooper in second he is good just behind the third and oh Franco Gamma oh Franco Gamma his car is completely destroyed and unfortunately his bad luck continues as the Caterham that all goes into the wall and goes right in front of the Sauber's Rick Yan has gone down the escape road for Sauber so and so it looks like um, oh and there's another car involved in there as well and that is a Williams. Is that Will Nella? I believe it may be Will Nella. And to look on board, we can see how it starts. So, oh, it was Alex Southgate who caused that by going into the back of Nella, who himself then unfortunately went into the wall. And that is not good uh, driving there from Southgate. Hits the wheel. It's lucky not to get any damage. But what happened to Cameron Anderson behind? As we're looking, so that he got a bit of contact. He went onto the curbs and then slipped on the curbs and went into the wall. And he actually gets hit quite significantly 
uh, there by Robert Hunter, who I think he, I um, believe he actually managed to get away without any damage. As we're looking at Ricky Ann, who just fortunately got caught on the curb and went down the escape road, lucky not to get any damage there. But he rejoined, although he rejoined and then went into the wall, which uh, probably wasn't the best thing to do, but he's still in the race. But now he's going to be very far behind. As we now look at Florin Volker making his first pit stop of the race for Ferrari on lap 15. Not much else has happened in this race so far, as Julius Anders now moves up to 8th place, so he's managed to, he's had a very good start for uh, for Catrum. And can he, get, uh, can he get some points for Catrum in this race? It's certainly possible. Considering what Monaco is like, but at the moment there is still 23 cars. Uh, 23 cars. There are 19 cars. We're about 23. Uh, from, I just plucked that out of thin air. But anyway, we've got 19 cars, I should say, still left in this race as Volvo comes out in the 13. It comes out out of the points. We're looking at Armand Car, who's coming about to come into the pits, and nearly gets into the back of Roberto Gamma there is actually uh, Roberto comes into the pits at the same time as well so we can have a little bit of a pit stop battle here who's going to come out on top is it going to be Roberto Gamma or Armar Car? let's wait and see as Armar Car now comes into the pits for his first pit stop of the Grand Prix <coughs> and where does he come out onto the track and will he come out, will he come out actually ahead of Gamma and the answer is is Gamma going to come out ahead no Gamma has to wait and so Oh my car jumps Reverso Gamba out of the stops, so that means uh, he'll at least be in the points, possibly, depending on how the other drivers do with their stops as well. Ricky Ann just coming across the finish line there, and he's about to be lapped by the leaders, actually, by, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, by Jay McKenzie as they come across the line, as McKenzie's got a 28-second lead, has he? Blimey, I didn't realise um, he'd got that far out in front, that is a long way, and wow. Uh, so Vegin Pedrina now comes into the pits for his first pit stop of the race. Has to wait a minute while the team get themselves ready, and now they change all four tyres. 21 laps of fuel, so uh, they'll make another stop. I don't know if he'll do a three stop or not. Um, and let's see uh, where he will come back out onto the track. And so it looks like he'll come out, I think, just in the points, I think, because no one else is coming across the line. And he comes out in P8, and he comes out just ahead of uh, Vedran Padrina. As we're looking uh, at um, as Vedran Padrina comes out ahead of Florian Volker, I should say. As Volker, who actually made a pass uh, on Oliver Glazebrook just before coming across the finish line there. So a good move there by Florian Volker at Rasgas. As now we look at the Mercedes of Jim McKenzie, who is way out in front, 28 seconds. I don't know how he's managed to gain this gap in that many laps, but Cooper clearly um, doesn't have the pace compared to... Uh, uh, his teammate, you see, look at that, 34 seconds, that is crazy, how has McKenzie managed to get such a gap, I, I, I don't really understand, that is ridiculous, <laughs> that is unbelievable, pays there from McKenzie, unbelievable Jeff, so I believe he'll actually still come out ahead of Cooper, I think, in the order, as he now comes out of the pits, and where is Cooper, I think he's even coming to the final corner yet, and that's always just about to come through, and about to lap Rick Yan there in the, uh, Sauber, actually. No, I think that might have been actually Oliver Glazebrook, actually. Um, as we're looking at Inesco, who's been stuck behind Cooper for almost the uh, majority, well, the entire race since the start, and he's just not been able to get past him right now, as Cooper has now uh, got traffic ahead of him, and traffic's going to certainly play a part in this race. As they're coming through the left-hander, they've still got the Sauber in front of them to lap. <coughs> as, it, as Cooper now finally makes his way past Rick Yan, or does he? Makes a move on the inside, close, but he makes a stick. And Ines gets, a, gets held up there as he's trying to slot through the gap as he now finally, does he make it round the outside of Yan? And yes, he does. And oh, there's a bit of contact there between Gal and Yan. That was uh, very, very close indeed. That could have gone up. Well, it was close because they actually touched, but it could have been a whole lot worse there. They were lucky that um, they didn't lose any debris of that car as they came through the left hand. And that was uh, very fortunate indeed, as you can see, coming through, no contact. Uh, well, no debris lost from the contact, I should say, as we're looking at Jamie Ketchy, who's got a whole bunch of traffic ahead of him as they're coming into the, uh, the source hairpin. Uh, as he's come through, he's got about five cars ahead of him. As they come through, we're looking at, uh, there's a car just coming out of the pits, and now Julius Anderson makes his way uh, into the pits as well for Caterham. He's had a fantastic race so far. And let's see where he comes out on track, and if he can continue this race that he has had, it's been really good. And he makes his pit stop, and the 
times, that's it, good four second stop, 30 laps, so we'll go quite far, so I imagine uh, he'll, have, he'll be on a two stop, he'll make one more stop before the end, so we're looking at a lot of glaze, we're just about to come through uh, Raskas there, so Anderson comes in, in a very, comes out in a very comfortable ninth position, as we're looking at McKenzie current leading, he's still got loads of traffic ahead of him, and oh my word, he launched it into the... Uh, corner there and he's lucky to not get any damage at all and oh and that's Roman Quag I thought I saw a car going into the wall into the background and Roman Quag who'd won the two races the last two races in Spain or oh, the last two races in Spain and the one before I couldn't I, unfortunately I can't remember it off my mind but um he won it was China actually I think it was yeah China he won so he won China and Spain but here in Monaco he is going to be getting no points as he just clips the edge of the wall coming out of the chicane there and that is his race done and dusted as we're looking at Robert Inescu, who's still stuck behind Cooper as he uh, comes into the pits for his first stop. So he's been stuck behind him for 27 laps. Probably one, one must be uh, one of the most boring races of, it, of his career so far. Just stuck in uh, third and not being able to pass anyone apart from the lap traffic. As he comes out the pits, 5.6 seconds stop quite quick. 27 laps of fuel, so I imagine that he'll be on a two-stop, I think, uh, before the end as he now comes out of the pits. For uh, the first time, and where is he going to come out and track it to the car? It looks like in P5, uh, ahead of Ricky Hartrazine, who's just coming around the final corner right now onto the pit straight. So he's in P5 in some clear airs. So we're looking at uh, the Mercedes of McKenzie, who is comfortably out in front right now. On lap 29. Oh, Miguel Escau is that? Is Miguel Escau? Oh, no, Miguel Escau's out! Miguel Escau is out of the race. I was wondering what he was doing with the steering wheel there, but he is out of the race. And I think he may have. Had, I think that he had contact with the McLaren there because there was a damaged wing. Oh dear me! We need to take a look at a replay of what happened here. So, uh, Miklos Gal, who is coming through in third position, having made his stop, Salva went a bit wide, and then oh, he just got hit back by Southgate again. Alex Southgate caused that first lap crash between Will Neller and Franco Garrett, then caused uh, the whole mess to happen afterwards, as unfortunately caused another one today. As you see coming through, I don't know what he was thinking there, Southgate. He really didn't need to do that because he was a lap down. But he's now going to have to go into the pits again. And Willows came through as well, and he hit some debris. And I don't think he actually got damage from that, uh, fortunately. So I think he's got away with one there. As now he is Robbie Nesca, who's behind the Ferrari of Joseph Willows. As he goes wide, coming around the corner. Does he avoid the wall? And I believe he did because he uh, there was no... Um, uh, no shot of him uh, with the wheel off, so uh, clearly he made it round as now the uh, Force India of Ahmad Khan makes it through past to Rossa, and there's Franco Lopez who goes wide coming into the corner and luckily uh, doesn't have any damage, but now uh, Robert Hunter is going to get a run on him coming down the straight, but I don't think he's going to really find much room to overtake, and he can't quite do it there, so <clears throat> uh, he's going to have to wait for another uh, place to overtake, so now Ahmad Khan is going to do the same move again, and yep, he goes past Oliver Glazebrook into P9 there, a good move there by the British drivers, we're now looking at Florent Volker who comes in for his first pit stop of the race for Ferrari, and in he comes, and let's see how quick this stop will be from the Ferrari crew, usually the stops are pretty quick, and they're pretty reliable, and let's see how quick this stop will be, tyres changed, off the jack, and 7.1, not that quick compared to uh, what it can be, what it can be, but regardless, he has uh, made the pit stop, and where is he going to come out on track? I think he'll come out in P8, uh, ahead of Oliver Glazebrook, and behind Julius Anderson. So Volvo comes out in a comfortable P8, so he'll have plenty of fresh air to put those tyres to good use, as we're looking at Waze Cooper trying to lap, I think it's Franco Lopez, um, in front of him, as we're looking at Pedro Madrina, who's running in P6 at the moment, with... Uh, Julius Anderson, I think, behind him in seventh. He's looking at Roberto Gamma coming through. Raskas goes a little bit wide, but uh, I think he'll avoid the walls. Looking at uh, <coughs> it's a bit of a deja vu, deja vu moment, as I should as I should say, as Inesco is caught up to the back of Cuba, but he's been caught, he's been behind him for 35 laps now. So whether or not he'll be able to pass him soon, I don't know, because he's struggled so far in this race, and I don't know if he's going to be able to get by or not. But we'll see. You never know what could happen. As we're looking at ways Cooper trying to lap. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Look at the Marussi in front of him. But he can't. But he does make it stick. And Inescu does make it through a bit easier than last time. So looking at... Oh, my word. Robert Hunter makes a bit of a lunge. Coming into the apron there. He was so lucky not to make contact with uh, the back 
of the Mauricio there. And how he didn't hit the back of him, I don't know. He was lucky not to hit the back of Lopez there as we were coming through. Went a, went a little bit deep into the corner and somehow didn't collect the back of Lopez's car. So that is a very lucky escape as we're looking uh, between Inesco and Kuba. As Kuba is stuck behind, I think it's De Rossi in front of him. And, and oh, there's contact! And Kuba's been collected, and Inescu! And he's been hit, and he's out! Inescu's out, and I think the uh, is the Mauricio out as well? I'm not sure, no, I think he's just lost his front wing. And oh my word, two title contenders, Kuba and Inescu, are out. Inescu's uh, struggling uh, to get past Kuba for 36 laps. And unfortunately, it has let him down. And he has got through there. As there was a Force India actually going by um, as well. As we're looking at all, oh, and there's a, uh, there's a car that's hit the debris. And that's Julius Anderson, who's hit the debris there in P5. And oh my word, that is not good at all. As we're looking at what is going to happen, and coming through, as we're looking at the Mercedes of uh, Kuba, as you can see, Inescu tried to make the move as the uh, as the Lotus behind uh, alongside him there, De Rossa, had gone wide into the corner. So Inescu tried to make the move on Kuba, it just didn't work, and unfortunately De Rossa got caught up in that. And then uh, Franco Lopez came steaming in, but had absolutely nowhere to go, and then hit. Um, Inescu's car, and Inescu actually was already um, out the race at this point, so Lopez's uh, impact wasn't actually, um, didn't actually impact Inescu at all, he was already out, but we're going to have a look at what happened here, because I think the Force India actually got past uh, Joseph Willows coming through here, and he hits the debris there, he's not going to get any damage, but, uh, but uh, Ricky Park saying, look at that, just sneaks through there, past uh, Willows into second place, and we're going to have a look at how Julius Anderson lost his front wing coming through the corner, <coughs> uh, excuse me, as we're looking at him coming through, and he hit the debris, I think it was it a wheel, or was it a bit of the wing, I'm not sure, so we're going to have a look in slow motion, and it was the wheel by the looks of it, and yep, right there, there was the contact, and there goes the wing. As he comes through the final corner, and now unfortunately for him, he's going to have to go through a whole lap. Uh, without a front wing, which is certainly going to have a bit of an impact on the downforce, so he better make sure he avoids any of the walls. And Ricky Huxley went past. I mean, even though the other flag symbol still out, it was after the accident that he went past. So I don't think he'll get a penalty for that. It's it's a tough decision, but I really don't think he'll get a penalty. But that was a good move by Ricky Huxley. Uh, I don't think I've very rarely seen anyone make a move there. So well done to the Indonesian driver. So he moves up into P2 ahead of Joseph Willows, and that is. A battle for position, so who knows if uh, Ricky Hoxton will stay ahead uh, by the end of the race. As now we're looking at uh, more traffic being battled as the two Lotuses coming around. And oh, one of them's gone into the wall, and I think that was David Greenwood who went into the wall there. And he's been collected by someone, and he's been and he's collected Vedrina with him. And Vedrina is out of the race, and Jay McKenzie, who's just uh, about slotting his way through there as he comes through. And oh, he's lost the front wing. McKenzie's lost his front wing as well. So Jamie McKenzie's going to have to go into the pits to pit for a new front wing. Uh, but I don't believe actually that will make much of an impact because I believe it's actually Rifky, Har Rifky Harkrasane who is in second place. But I think he's a while away. So this could be very, very interesting indeed. And okay, what is going on? And let's see here. And so you can see, uh, that was what happened. So, I mean, obviously, Greenwood tried to make a move around the outside. De Rossi was never really on. And Vedrina, I think, oh, no, was Vedrina caught by his teammate? I think Vedrina may have been caught by his teammate again. And Alex Southgate has been in the absolute wars. Like, Jesus Christ. Um, wow, that is ridiculous. I can't quite believe he's actually done that. So, as McKenzie comes to the pits, as unfortunately Southgate has been involved in several incidents this race, so he's certainly not going to be a particular favourite amongst the drivers so wow there we go as we're looking at McKenzie changing his wing and his tyres so will he go to the end actually will be interesting to see and no he won't actually having looking having a look at the fuel 25 laps so he'll have to make one more before the end but I believe that will still be enough for him to uh, uh, win the race as we're looking at McKenzie coming out 11.4 seconds stop and he'll still, I think, come out in the lead because it's only um, Park St. Willis and Volker that cars on the lead lap right now. As we're looking at our car, who's right behind Oliver Glazebrook in the back of P6 here, coming through the right hand. Glazebrook goes wide, and the car makes the move sticks. A good move there by the Force India driver. No damage done. And here is 
uh, Robert Hunter, who is running in 8th place at the moment, and he's about to make uh, into the pit stop, and into the pits he comes, so he's now in the points. He actually started plum last, so he comes uh, into the pits for his, I believe it's his second stop of the race. And let's see where he will come out on track and see how quick his stop will be. Will he go to the end? The answer is... Yes, he will actually. The 41, that is, that is going to go to the end of the race. So that's going to be very interesting indeed to see how that works out for him. So he comes out the pit, so he will be going to the end. So that's an interesting strategy. So I don't know how the one stop is going to work out here, but we shall see as we look at Jamie McKenzie who is fighting his way through some more trucking. He must be sick and tired of this uh, during this race, but he'll be so glad he'll probably get out of it. But if he uh, wins the race, that is. Just, oh, my word! And Lopez and McKenzie really got very close there. And how Lopez didn't lose uh, any, or have suffered any damage, that is, is very lucky indeed. Um, so we're going to have a look. So, I mean, McKenzie really forced him out wide there, and Lopez uh, luckily didn't have any damage from that near miss, so as we're looking at the two Ferraris battling each other, as here is Volker on the inside of Willows, and he makes it up into P3, and so that is for position. So Volker, the number one at the moment at Ferrari, so to speak. As we're looking at uh, Joseph Willows, who's actually about to come into the pits, and in he comes on lap 47 of the race. So who knows what else is going to happen? And let's see where he comes back out onto the track. So I think we'll come out still in fifth, because, uh, and Julius Anderson is actually in fifth place. So, wow, we completely we forgot about him, but Julius Anderson is still running in a very, very impressive P5. That is uh, quite uh, amazing, I have to say, as we're looking at Julius Anderson just coming down onto the front straight now, so we'll have just come out ahead of him. But uh, I don't believe Anderson will be a threat for the podium. Looking at Ricky Hark saying who has Florian Volker actually breathing down his neck, so this is a battle for position. And uh, Ricky Hark saying actually has a lot more fuel uh, than, well, not a lot more fuel, but he certainly has at least two laps more fuel than uh, Volker does. So Volker clearly has the pace here. So this is a legit battle for second position at the moment. So can Volker get past as, as he's coming into his favourite uh, corner on the track, uh, Raskas, where he's made a couple of overtakes? Will he do another one? Let's have a look, and oh, Harkson goes wide, and surely that's Volker's chance, and he's done it, he's up into P2, another fantastic move by the German driver, and he moves up into second position, this will be his best finish of the year, if he stays there, as now Oliver Glazebrook comes into the pits for Sauber, to make his final stop, I believe, in the race, unless, uh, unless, he does, unless he decides to go on a three stop, but I imagine this will be his last one, let's have a look, change the tyres, and yep, that is going to the end, so... There we go, he comes out in, it looks like, just in the points in P10. As he comes through and out of the pits. And let's see where he comes out. Comes out in just in the points in P10. And now he is Florian Volker who comes in for his final stop of the race. So I don't believe, obviously, uh, so Mark Rick Harting is going to continue out on track. He certainly had um, a a lot more fuel, so he had a few laps more fuel, so he'll still be going out, he'll still be continuing, so where is Volker? He actually hasn't come across the line yet, so he's he's really far behind Volker, so Volker really had the pace on him, as he's now finally actually just come across the line, but he certainly was quite far behind before he even went past, so I think Volker's looking pretty good for P2 right now, as he now comes out of the pits, and in P3 as there's Willows down P4, so he's in comfortable position right now, but he does have traffic ahead of him, which is a problem. So we're looking at a battle for P7, this is between Jan and Roberto Gamba, and oh, there's a car gone wide there, and who's that? And it's Jamie McKenzie! Jamie McKenzie, the leader, has suffered a transmission failure! Oh my word, another mechanical failure, unbelievable scenes! So that means that Florin Volker is going to take the lead of the race! And McKenzie, who looks so comfortable in the lead, is going to get absolutely nothing from this race! And oh my word! I mean, that's that's interesting for the for the um, with regards to um, the title because uh, I think all the top guys are not going to score any points today. So Florin Volker is going to lead the step. Well, he's going to lead the race once Ricky Harkusain comes into the pits, who's still leading right now, but he'll still be yet to pit. Will he be able to catch Volker? I'm not convinced, but who knows what's going to happen? As Rick Yan is now in the pits for Salva for his final stop. 
in uh, the Sauber and 5.76 stop that is pretty quick and effective and out of the pits he is going to come and let's see where he comes out onto the track as we're looking at Rick Hark saying who's leading the race I believe actually for the first time in his career I don't believe he's actually led any laps before this uh, but correct me if I am wrong but Rick Hark saying comes into his final stop of the race and he will come out I believe in P2 so Ricky Harkson could be on for his uh, best result in the OC. He has taken a podium before, he has taken third, but he has never been higher than that. As Volker now comes across the line as Willows goes into um, uh, into uh, second. So actually, no, I think Willows actually is going to the end. So on second thoughts, actually, this will be a Ferrari 1-2. So Harkson will actually match his best result of the season in P3 uh, as Julius Anderson has gone past him. But I believe Anderson will have to make one more stop for the end. And actually, yes, he will. He's picking this lap for enough and he all just comes out there uh, Mark saying just in front of Oliver Glazebrook and now Julius Anderson who was running incredibly in third position now comes in for his final stop of the race for Caterham been one of the few ones that has avoided trouble I don't know if he's actually got involved in uh, any collisions this race um, so yeah let's uh, see where he comes out onto the track so it looks like going to be some great points for Julius Anderson in his first season in the OC or in the top tier, I should say. Um, let's see, quite nice extra stop. Uh, not bad. But he comes out onto the track as we're looking at Armand Carr, who's about to make his final stop of the race for Force India. In the other Force India, he was running P4, but he'll come up behind Julius Anderson. And I think he'll come up P5, I believe, unless, uh, unless the gap between Anderson and whoever is behind him is closer. I'm not sure. But he uh, pits for the final sign car, changes his tyres and comes back out onto the track and he comes out uh, behind Cameron, a Cameron uh, Julius Anderson Cameron Anderson, damn it uh, as we're looking at him coming out the pit so he comes out in P5, he comes out just ahead of Roberto Gamba and the Mauricio who's still going so credit to him as well the back mark is certainly uh, railing in the fact that all the front runners are falling by the wayside, that is for sure as Roberto Gamba changes his tyres and more fuel is put in, enough for him to go to the end of the race. Changes tyres, and boom, there we go. Comes out in, it looks like, just in the points with Franco Lopez just behind him in P10. As Roberto Gamba comes out of the pits, and out he comes in P9. So it looks to be some good points there for Roberto Gamba. As, we're now just, as we now just have uh, eight laps to go, as here's the battle actually for second place. So maybe Willows might not have second place after all, as here's Rifky Parker saying, wanting to get his best result ever in the OC. They come through uh, the swimming pool chicane and heading into Raskas. Will uh, Parkinson make a move here? Uh, no, he doesn't. He's not quite close enough. There's a yellow flag out at the first corner. Oh, there's a major crash. And that is Franco Lopez in the Mauricio. So he is not going to be getting any points today. And that is in a very, very dangerous position. His car is now getting pushed away. But there'll be yellow flags out there for sure. And then... Oh, no, Willows. Oh, quite incredibly. Joseph Willows has hit Franco Lopez's stranded car coming into the corner. And he is out of the race. Unbelievable. And the chance of a Ferrari 1-2 has unfortunately gone. But what a result that is for Ricky Park saying who is going to get second place by the looks of it. So what happened here? So it was a battle between um, De Rossa and Lopez. And oh, they just both made contact. And look, De Rossa and De Rossa lost his, uh, his front wing as well. But Willis, as you can see, coming into the corner. There was the flag coming out. But he just didn't. He couldn't, unfortunately, uh, avoid... Lopez's car, despite it getting pushed away, couldn't avoid it in time. And unfortunately, collects him. Ricky Harkson goes into the back of Willows, but I don't think he actually loses his front wing, so he's lucky to get away without damage there. So Harkson has got second in the bag right now. And here we are looking at a battle for P3. So Julius Anderson is actually. Oh, my word, and that was very close. Julius Anderson is running in P3 at the moment. He could be getting a podium vacation, but that is unless Armar Car has anything to do with it as we just have four laps to go so can Julius Anderson hold on for a podium he's got traffic to lap in front of him he's got Rick Yan to lap in front of him as we're looking at Anderson coming through the swimming pool chicane it's going to be very very close indeed can he hold on it's very difficult to overtake around here but we shall see and oh De Rossa's got a problem and Kurosa but De Rossa is out the race and oh there's contact there and uh and what's happening oh Armour Car's out and there we go Armour Car is out of the race oh dear me and he's Park right in the middle of the road. That is the worst place possible that you could park. As there is, I believe, Florian Volker is just coming through uh, past um, 
has stricken Carlsberg, but Armand Carr is sadly not going to get a podium. And Julius Anderson, I think, has the podium in the bag. Oh my word, that is unbelievable. What an end of this race it has been. But with just four laps to go, Armand Carr is going to get... Well, actually, I think he might still get some points, though, actually. Kind of think of it, because I think there was only... Um, there was only about 10 cars left, so I think he'll still get some points, actually, to be fair. But, uh, so he already made contact there with the back of Anderson's car, and that caused him damage. And then there was Roberto Gambo who came through, who himself actually hit the um, car, but didn't get any damage, luckily. And Glazebrook got caught up in that, and Southgate snuck his way through as there was Volk, who appeared on scene. Uh, did you just see that there? And, oh my word. And that was a dramatic race, so Glazebrook eventually got through. But as we're now looking on the Final lap of the race, so Florian Volker leads, and here is the top 10 on the final lap. So Florian Volker leading the race, Rivki Harkzain in second, Julius Anderson is in third place. That is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this race has just been absolutely insane. So that is your podium. And my god, so uh, Volker's got a 30 second lead over Rivki Harkzain in second position. So it's uh, certainly not going to be. He's, he's not going to close up. So here is the top five, in fact. Florian Volker in first. Ricky Harkson in second. Julius Anderson still on the lead lap in third. Robert Hunter from last on the grid in fourth position. Rick Yan in fifth. Roberto Gamba in sixth for Mauricio. Seventh, Alex Southgate in eighth. Oliver Glazebrook. Just eight cars finishing this race. That actually... Um, that betters the record that was set in 2009, where just nine cars finished the race. So what an unbelievable Monaco Grand Prix this has been. This has been so chaotic as we're looking at Florian Volker coming through the swimming pool chicane for the final time. And he's about to come through Raskas for the final time. And Florian Volker, he's avoided all the chaos. He stayed on track. His car has stayed intact. And Florian Volker takes his first victory of the season and his first for Ferrari in Monaco. Congratulations to him. What a race to win as well. And your first for Ferrari as Luke, we're looking at Oliver Glazebrook who's set to come across the line in 8th position, so the last car to actually finish the race, which is uh, ridiculous. Uh, so Glazebrook comes around the final corner, and he comes across the line in 8th position. And let's see the rest of the order come through, unless anything else happens. But here is Ricky Harkslade, who takes his best ever finish for forcing the in second. Well under him, what a race he's had. And Robert Hunter, who finished, who start, who qualified last on the grid. It was looking very glum for him. Uh, but he's going to get fourth place, and he'll be very chuffed with that one. As he comes through Raskas for the final time. Goes just scraping the wall there. As he comes through the final corner, and Robert Hunter comes across the line to take fourth place. Well done to him. But here is the man of the moment. Julius Anderson for Caterham in his first season in the top tier is set to take third position for Caterham Monaco. Well done to him. What a race. Unbelievable scenes as he comes across the line in third. Rick Yan takes fifth place for Salva. He comes across the line. And Roberta Gamma comes across the line in sixth, just beating Alex Southgate for seventh. who had uh, a few collisions to say the least in this race. Uh, but anyway, there's your winner. One hour and 40 minutes. That was a very long race indeed. But here is your full race results with Foreign Volker winning with Ricky Parkstein second, Julius Hansen third, Robert Hunter fourth, Ricky Ann fifth, Roberto Gamba sixth, Alex Southgate seventh, Oliver Glazebrick eighth, Armour Carr ninth, and Carosa Madurosa tenth. They were still classified despite retiring. So Carr and Durosa completed the points with the following drivers all retiring. Joseph Willows uh, retiring 11th, McKenzie taking the first lap with Joseph Willows, Franco Lopez, Jay McKenzie, Vedra Matula, David Greenwood, Waze Cooper, Robbie Inescu, Miklas Gal, Roman Quad, Cameron Anderson, Will Neller, and Franco Gamba all retiring from this race with, as I said, McKenzie taking the fastest lap with a 113.3. So there we go. That is the four race results. So we'll now take a look at the standings. So the standings of the top four stay the same, but crucially, Florin Volker, uh, Florin Volker, I should say, moves up uh, to P5 with Will Neller down to six, with Ricky Parkinson moving up to P7, Joseph Willows. Um, staying, uh, roughing down to P8 with Alex Southgate staying in 9th, Miklas Gal 10th with Armand Carr 11th, the rest of the order as follows with Veteran Trader down to 12th, Rick Yan 13th, Julius Anderson all the way up to 14th, Robert Hunter 15th, Roberto Gamba 16th, Oliver Glazebrook 17th, David Green 18th, Kiros Madurosa 19th with his first point of the season here, Franco Gamba, Cameron Anderson and Franco Lopez the only drivers yet to score a point this season. So now we're going to take a look at the constructor standings with the Mercedes leading 
ahead of Williams in second with a pretty comfortable margin. Uh, with Red Bull third, Ferrari in fourth, with Red Bull just two points ahead of Ferrari, with Force India fifth, McLaren in sixth, Sauber in seventh, Caterham in eighth, Toro Rosso in ninth, Rossi in tenth, with Lotus the last last position with uh, just three points. But there you have it. That has been an unbelievably chaotic uh, Monaco Grand Prix. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to, as usual, vote for your driver of the day and get the race rating out of 10. Thanks for watching, everyone. And we will see you for the next round of the season, the Canadian Grand Prix at the Montreal Street Circuit. Thanks for watching, and we will see you there. Goodbye. Thank you.